Okay, the first thing we need to talk about is your name, <laughs> because I call you Rose, and yet on the bus, I think one time you said, I'm one of the few people that call you Rose. What do you prefer? What do you go by? Tell me that story. Um, well, when I was little, me and my family were Christian, and my name was Rose Lanesia Macon, and then when my family converted to Islam, it became, I got to pick it out, so I added Malika, which, which means queen, and my middle name is Amma Aziza, which means servant of the Almighty. And my parents picked our, out our new last name, so the whole thing is Malik Rose Abdus Salam, or the entire thing is Malik Rata Amaziza Ben Khalid Abdus Salam. So you didn't answer my question, what should I call you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rose is fine. It was just you and uh, Coach Broughton sometimes call me Rosie, and nobody ever calls me Rosie. Well, is that okay, or what, what do you prefer? I mean, as long as I know you're talking to me and it's positive, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. <laughs> You are one of the more positive people I've ever run into in my life. What do you, what do you attribute that? Where did that come from? Um, well, my dad happens to be a very social person, very, very social person. Uh, I grew up in martial arts because my dad uh, did martial arts all his life. And when I was three, he started me in it. And so I was always fighting and I was always meeting people from everywhere. Like, we would go to tournaments, we would go to the World Championships in Washington, D.C., and everyone from everywhere would be there. And here I am, this little tiny girl. And so, and my dad, he was, he's kind of a big deal. He's not like Bruce Lee, but um, everybody knows him, and his Sifu is um, a really big deal. Uh, Sifu Bill Fong, and he is in New York, and so everybody knows him. And so I just, I caught on, be nice, be personable. Be positive, and people will like you. So let me get this straight. So your dad is a real social guy. People like him a lot. Then he goes out and knocks the crud out of people. Is that kind of the way it goes? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and I was, a lot of little girls don't really fight, so I right. grew up always fighting the boys, and you always got to be nice to them afterwards because they're not going to want to talk to you after they lost to a girl. Right, right. So, How does that relate to basketball? How did you get into basketball from, from that point? Um. Well... I don't really know. My parents just signed me up for Parks and Rec when I was really little, and then I was always the biggest kid around. So, and basketball was very. I grew up in Stowe, Ohio, and basketball was a really, really big deal. And we had Coach Hodges put on these camps every summer, and so I would go to the camps. And high, Stowe High School would win state championships a couple years, so it just blossom. And then I started AAU. They went on in high school, and then I'm here. So, is it safe to say then basketball was your main sport as you, you know, as a high school player and and through the those junior high years? Yeah, uh, because I started other sports in high school, but basketball was always the main consistent, and my parents put a lot of money into it, and I I played a lot. Right. On the website, it simply lists you as being from Delaware, but you're talking about growing up in Ohio. How did you get to Delaware? Um, I grew up in Ohio, in Ohio uh, until I was 13, and my parents, we had a Kung Fu school, but when people started losing their jobs because people who where we lived in Ohio had a lot of, like, factory jobs. My mom worked at Little Tykes, the toy company, and she would build toys, and we would people were losing their jobs, but my parents just didn't, didn't really mind, didn't say, hey, you don't have to stop bringing your kids here, or you don't have to stop coming here, and so we started, ended up having to pay for the rent for both our house and the Kung Fu school out of our own pocket, because we weren't really charging anyone, and so we moved to Delaware because my dad found a new job, and it was better for us. Your family is still there, I would imagine. That's still, whether it's Ohio or Delaware, it's a long way from William Jewell College. Yeah, it is. Um, my entire family, like my cousins, my grandparents, aunts and uncles, they all live in Ohio. But it's just me, my mom and dad, and my two little brothers that live in Delaware. That would be kind of a tough move at 13 years of age, I would imagine. How did you handle it? Uh, I, was, I was pretty upset. I was really mad. I, I didn't really understand what was going on. I just knew that here I am, halfway through eighth grade. Basque, this was right when basketball season is starting right. in eighth grade. And I'm moving. 
I'm leaving all my friends. We, I'm supposed to start high school next year, so now I have to meet all these new people. Not only am I moving, I'm not moving to like another town where I can maybe know some people. I'm moving all the way to Delaware. I didn't even know where Delaware was. <laughs> didn't know that it was the first state. I knew nothing about Delaware. And then so I moved to Delaware, and they let me be on the try out for the team. I think that's when I, like basketball really got serious for me because I, right when I came, uh, they let me try out, and I was on the team, and I did great. And then my dad started an AAU team down there for the girls that were on my um, eighth grade basketball team. And then we did good. We went to uh, Pennsylvania and Maryland for some tournaments. And then high school came. Malika Rose Abdul Salam is our guest, and uh, I wanted to, to ask you: with the move there to Delaware, did it make it in some ways easier to leave for college coming to Jewel? Um, I mean, it's never it's never easy to leave your parents, especially I'm my I'm the oldest, and I've been with my parents pretty much their entire lives because they had me when they were young, so it was hard for them, especially because this is like. This is the main part of their lives. This is what their lives have been focused around for 18 years. And then me, Jules kind of a far. It's, mm -hmm. it's a 20-hour drive. I can't just go home on the weekends like, say, Maddie Mason, who lives in Liberty. And so I was ready in the sense of I'm the oldest, and I've always took on a lot of responsibilities, and I've never really been that, like, broken up about things. So other than the move to Delaware, which I got over, yeah. And I think getting over that helped me be able to go ahead and move to Delaware. I mean, move out here because I know this isn't going to be forever. I know I'm going to see my family sometime. And I don't think a lot of kids really get that. It's not forever. It's only for a little while. Yeah, why Jewel, though? Why did you come this far? Um, Coach Garrison was recruiting me. And the academics are just pretty impeccable. And it looked like a really good fit. And... Other schools that were recruiting me weren't really the best fit for me. Yeah. What do you want to do when you get out of school? I guess what's the question would be, what's your major right now, and then what do you want to do after you get out of school? I'm an elementary education major with psychology as my concentration. I want to do special ed, but that's not a major here. So I figured get the closest thing, and be, being a psychology concentration, I can maybe end up with two degrees when I graduate right. if I can like pull off the double major. And it's going pretty well, but um, when I graduate, I plan on joining the Peace Corps to go to Africa and help help little kids out there. <laughs> and then I just, I really want to do things for other people, and I see that special education kids and maybe kids that don't really grow up with the best background aren't really, don't have a lot of attention. And it's not their faults. It's not their faults if a kid comes to high school and they act out, but because they can't read. That obviously means that they were passed along by people who didn't really care if they could read or not. So I want to be that difference that helps kids actually like school because I didn't I didn't hate school. It wasn't my favorite thing in the world, but I know a lot of kids who just absolutely dread coming to school and that's not something that I want to be and I see a lot of teachers that don't try to facilitate being like having school be a great, big part of their life. Teachers are with kids six hours out of the day, five days out of the week. That's more time than they probably spend with their families. So if you don't like school and you don't like your teachers, that obviously means that it's going to hinder you in life. Well, that's very well articulated. I think you've got a very good point there. And you can talk about that all day, I have a feeling. And, you know, we, we could get into a discussion about that. Before I let you go, though, and our time is running a little bit short, what about basketball here? Uh, how, how have you fit in with the team? Is, uh, we talk a lot about the team family kind of dynamic that Jewel has uh, on their women's basketball team. How, how has that been for you? Um, well, at the beginning of the year, I was a little nervous about, like, how I was going to be able to, like, gelling with the team because it seemed like the older girls seemed to get along better but it was only because they knew each other longer mm -hmm. and as the like years go on it was it didn't take a long time for me and the other freshmen to get situated in with the other girls because they're just they're welcoming they welcome you in. they want you to be a part of their family because here we are we spend we've been together together since the first day of school and if we're not able to be a family since that first day and nothing's going to work out our wins aren't going to work out when, say, we have a hard practice and maybe Coach Chris ran us a lot. We are able to come together with that because that we all are 
sharing the same experience. We all are going through having to balance school with basketball. We all know what practice was like that morning and why we're all tired. So we always have something to connect on. And we're always together because we have the same schedules, because we have the same practice time. So we always eat together. We, It's really nice knowing that while I'm away, all the way out here from Delaware, that I have a group of 16 girls that can be my family and that can I can turn to. If I have a problem here at Jewel, I can go talk to them. We may not be able to necessarily fix it, but I can go talk to them and express all types of my feelings, and they're always going to be there because we're all going to, through the same thing. Well, this has gone way too fast. I appreciate your time. Uh, Malika Rose Abdusalam, and I'm going to I'll probably still call you Rosie. I hope that's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. She has been our guest, and we'll be back with more in a moment on the Hy-Vee Halftime Report.